My name is Sally, and I am 42 years old, and I am an office worker. I divorced my... I am also a childhood friend of my husband, and our parents live close by. I have taken over the family business, and although we are divorced, Steve and I are still living in the same city. When I got divorced from Steve, I thought about moving away from this city because I didn't want to see his face anymore. However, because I love the schooling system of our district, I bought a used apartment in the same city and lived there. The reason why Steve and I got divorced was due to Steve's infidelity. He was cheating on me. From the very beginning of our marriage, we both worked. We also cooperated in housework, to be fair. Our daughter, Angelica, had been in daycare since she was three months old. Steve had taken over his family ironworking business, and since the company was in a very difficult situation, he wasn't getting any decent salary. Steve and I went to negotiate with Charles and Robin, my parents-in-law, several times, but they just said, we can't give you any more because the company is not doing well. However, our family still had to make a living, so we thought about Steve changing his jobs. However, Steve would not actually take action of changing his job by saying, If my parents ask me to do something, I can't say no. Then, six months before our divorce, things happened. When my daughter was in junior high school, I was put in charge of a new project at work. I had several opportunities to work on projects before, but I kept turning them down because Angelica was still young, and I thought the mother should be around when the child is young. However, my daughter is in middle school. With my daughter's and my husband's consent, I was able to take on the project. This inevitably meant that I would not be able to do family chores as much as I had in the past. There were days at work when I had to stay late and wasn't able to come back until the next day. In the midst of all this, my daughter helped me with household chores and did the cookings. Steve was cooperative in the beginning, but he took advantage of my lack of attention and stopped doing more and more of the household chores, let alone taking out the garbage, which was his responsibility to do so. I was unaware of this, and just worked very hard at work every day. Then one day, a month before our divorce, my daughter asked me to make time to talk to her. I immediately left work on the dot to make time for Angelica. Then, my husband was not there, even though it was time for him to come home. I asked my daughter, Is your father late today? She replied, Always. He always comes home just right before you get home. I was stunned. My husband told me that he eats dinner with our daughter every day. Since I always came home after 10 p.m., I relied on Steve to take care of Angelica. Then, my daughter started talking as if she had been keeping it all in for a very long time. She informed me that my husband comes back home after 9 p.m. very drunk every night. Dinner had always been prepared by Angelica, and not Steve. Steve just always had his phone with him and was constantly texting and calling. I was very surprised at everything Angelica told me because I had no idea of this. I could not forgive myself for making my daughter feel this insecure at such an impressionable time in her junior high school years. I apologized to Angelica for not being able to notice the situation from before. I also told Angelica that I wanted her to leave the situation to me to handle from now on. Now how should I talk to my husband about this? I should gather more evidence. As if I am trying to solve a problem at work, one task after another came to my mind to deal with this situation. Angelica said, Mom, you should just get a divorce from him soon. I don't want a father like him. He wasn't a father to me. As she said this, Angelica was so determined to cooperate and gather evidences. My husband, who made my daughter feel like this, is my enemy at this point. I immediately planted a tablet in his car with the GPS turned on. 
we will continue living as how we just normally did until we have the perfect evidences for divorce. A few days later, my husband left for work saying that he had to work over the weekends. The GPS worked and it did a very good job. Steve's car went in the opposite direction from his office and stopped in front of a very busy and popular cafe. I immediately went to the cafe and succeeded in obtaining photographic evidence. After the cafe, I followed Steve on the expected course and was able to get more good pictures for evidence. And that night, I confronted my husband, who had deliberately came home in his work clothes with the evidence photos and questioned him. Steve turned pale and he was speechless. When I was talking to him about what I was planning for our future, I was surprisingly calm and nonchalant. I told him that I knew how he hasn't been taking care of Angelica and just forced her to do all of the household chores on her. I also told him that I knew that he has been just paying attention to his phone, rather his daughter, at her sensitive times. I also told him what I saw during the day. My husband apologized in tears, but I did not have the capacity to forgive him. Then I signed the divorce papers I had prepared and decided for both of us to go back to both of our parents' house to tell them of the news. When I told Angelica beforehand about actually divorcing her father, she agreed to it as long as I promised her that I would get the custody of her. From there, the things proceeded at a steady pace. My in-laws wanted us to work it out and to avoid the divorce somehow. But once they realized that Steve's infidelity was the cause, Charles and Robin stopped saying anything. When Charles and Robin were convinced, the situation proceeded at a faster pace. My parents said, You are always welcomed at our place. But Angelica said, I want to live with you, just the two of us. I will help you with the household chores. So, Angelica and I started looking for a place to live with just the two of us. We were excited to look for a place that was close to Angelica's junior high school and wanted to find a fully furnished and stylish place. Then, we found a very stylishly renovated used apartment. We both loved and agreed on that place. We decided to take the plunge and buy this place. Thankfully, I had a job, so we bought it with a mortgage, which was about the same price as the rent. Steve went back to Charles and Robin's place. From then, I really enjoyed living with my daughter and was happy to see that my daughter, who was so small and young, had grown up into a person who I could talk to about anything like a friend. A few months later, one day, while I was leading such a busy but happy life, I received a phone call from my parents' house. Hey, Sally, Steve and Robin just abruptly came to our house. They are saying that they were trying to contact you but couldn't reach you. What should I do? Should I just make them leave? I was shocked but decided to head to my parents' house. I had indeed blocked all means of communication from my ex-husband and I thought it was my fault that he couldn't get in touch with me. I rushed to my parents' house as soon as I got the call because it was only a five minute drive. When I arrived at my parents' house, my mother approached me with a wry smile. My mother said, Hey, Steve came with Robin. What do they want from you now? They seem to have something on their mind. I was so surprised because neither your father nor I had any idea what was going on. I said, I'm really sorry. I'll get them to leave right away. And as I said this, I went into the house. I entered the house and found the two of them sitting in the guest room behaving nicely. My father saw that I had arrived and spoke to them. What can we do for you today? Even though I don't think there's anything we can do for you now. Then my ex-husband opened his mouth. Steve says, I loaned your daughter Sally $20,000, so I want you to pay it back. I didn't know what he was talking about, and so I said, $20,000? I don't remember borrowing anything from you. 
my ex-husband replied with a disgusted look on his face. What are you talking about? I lent you $20,000 for the wedding. You're a swindler for trying to overdraw that debt. As Steve said this, Robin, my mother-in-law, started to get on board. The wedding ceremony was for the bride, so that's a debt. No doubt in that. I was stunned and speechless. Then, my ex-husband went even more out of line. If you can't pay back the $20,000 immediately, then you have to remarry me. If you remarry me, you won't owe me anything. As Steve said this, he put the marriage certificate in front of me. Then, my father, who is a very patient man, turned red. I have been listening to this conversation quietly, but what you're saying is insane. Wedding fee is considered as a debt? That's the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard. Maybe you're so desperate for money that you think you have used your brain to the fullest to come up with this idea, but if you want to pick a fight with us, I'll be your opponent as much as you want. I'll see you in court. After saying this, my father tore up the marriage certificate which Steve has brought. I was startled, but my father brought me back to my senses. Wedding fee is debt. Then, I'll have to charge you, Steve, for 15 years of our married life because you couldn't even make enough money to support you or Angelica and I on a salary like a high school student's part-time job. I'm sure $20,000 won't be enough to repay my charges against you, but are you ready for it? And to remarry you? I'm sorry, but I don't even want to see your face again. Remarry the woman who you are having an affair behind my back. Then, my ex-husband said with tears in his eyes, I lost in touch with her right after we got our divorce. We were nothing so serious, so I don't have any problem that I cannot contact her anymore. Then my ex-mother-in-law opened her mouth. My son is not the only one to blame for the affair. I think it was the fact that you were always away at work, working, instead of taking care of the family in the first place. I try my best to hold back my laughter. No, no. I think it's your son's fault no matter what you think. He is the one who had an affair with another woman when he was married to me, and that is the fact. He had a family to take care of but didn't, and just fooled around with another woman. Are you out of your mind? Then my husband looked embarrassed and spoke. Fine, we don't have to remarry. Just, we want you to lend us some money. I knew it. He was here for the money after all. I knew that I had more money than he did, and I also knew that Steve had a habit of spending more money than he could afford. I sighed. I'm sorry, but I can't help you with your request. We are not a bank, nor we are your money lender. If you don't have money, you have no choice but to live frugally. Please leave. As I said this, Robin said, Just $10,000! No, even $5,000 will do. Please lend us. Our company went out of business and we can't make ends meet. When I tried to refuse, my father said and asked my mother, Sandra, please pack something to eat. Pack for three people. My mother willingly started to prepare. My father spoke. That's all we can do. We have taught our daughter to help people in need. But we didn't teach our daughter to do what she is told to do, but just to be a help and support. I believe and felt that our daughter, Sally, has grown up to be a very strong adult. Please take home these home-cooked meals for my wife today that I am so proud of. And don't ever get involved with my family ever again. And with that, he opened the door for them and urged them to leave. Steve and Robin just took the supper from my mother, which she had prepared for them, and left hurriedly. 
After seeing them off, my parents and I looked at each other. I started to laugh and said, What was that? I couldn't believe what had just happened now. I thought I was in some kind of drama on a TV show. My father replied, It's probably much more spectacular than a bad drama on a TV show. Anyways, that's my girl. You've gotten so strong. My mother said, You really have grown strong. I was so surprised. And I was very proud of what I saw today. What should I do now that I've packed all the dishes for dinner for them? She said this and laughed. To that, I said, I'll bring Angelica now, and we can all go out for dinner. I've caused you so much trouble, so let me at least buy you two dinner. I don't want to owe you anything. When I said this, my parents were both very happy with the idea. Of course, we talked about what had happened over dinner. Later, I heard that my ex husband's ironworks business had gone bankrupt. Steve, who only had a work experience from there, started working somewhere else. But his absenteeism was so noticeable that he soon got fired from the new job. The place where Steve's parents' house used to be had become a vacant lot before I knew it. And as for me, I am as busy as ever. My daughter, Angelica, is growing up obediently and has not yet entered the rebellious phase. I hope that one day Angelica will marry a wonderful man who is nothing like her father.